Hey guys, Jeremy here with Majors Academy Dog Training, and I want to show you guys uh, in this video uh, CJ's before and after when it comes to the vacuum. As you might know, CJ is a, a very reactive pit pit bull that came to us for two weeks, and one of the issues is that he is uh, he hates the vacuum. He's very reactive towards the vacuum, but don't get it twisted, CJ acts that way towards the vacuum out of fear and all we have to do and all I'm going to do in this video is show him that he doesn't have to be uh, in that fearful state of mind when I vacuum he'll start to attack the vacuum you'll see he'll bite it a few times and all I'm doing is using correct conversational leash work to, sh to tell him that um, those actions going towards the vacuum and biting it is not something that should be happening and then you'll start to see his mindset change where he kind of retreats from it uh, kind of in an avoidant state of mind but that is the next step to accepting uh, that you know the vacuum is not going to harm him because it is fair it, it's it's a really strange um, foreign loud obnoxious sound to dogs and it just freaks them out so watch this video he's going to be coming You'll see his reaction to it at first, and then I'll point out when I actually start to work him and correct uh, his behavior. And you'll see how he is able to then accept that I want to still vacuum and you should be able to just relax because it's a, it's a, it's not uh, a stressful situation. So, but that is the power of advocating for your dog. It's the same type of protocol you would do if you were on a walk and he was reacting towards the dog you have to take charge and you have to tell him hey uh, this situation is not that stressful we're just I'm just vacuuming this vacuum is not going to harm you and or this dog is not going to cause you any harm so let's continue to walk or in this situation let's just continue to relax and you see CJ get over the vacuum so check it out guys guys I want to pinpoint uh, when I actually do the correcting just to kind of show you guys uh, exactly what's happening through the process so I'm beginning to work him and right there I just gave him a correction uh, just letting him know starting to let him know that there's no need, there's no need to lunge after the, the vacuum and so now he's already kind of in that avoidance state of mind which is okay because that's the next step the next step is relaxation and acceptance so he'll he'll start to accept the fact that because I'm intervening and telling him hey you know this vacuum is not going to get you there's no reason to be fearful of it then he kind of starts to avoid a little, little bit instead of going after it but after a while and a few repetitions they'll start to relax and say okay this vacuum really isn't after me I don't need to really worry so I gave him a little correction there I think I felt a little tension on the lead there you go right there there's another one but as you see it's no there's no heavy-handed going on. There's no need to yank and crank. It's just small little corrections of communication that I established on the walk, and it's going to pay big dividends here. Pay big dividends uh, when you try and, you know, help them become less fearful of anything that they could be fearful of.
So now again, he just backed up away from it. That's much better than going for it and bite, and biting it. Those, those pieces from those blankets, the up, upstairs vacuum didn't even pick up. Really? Yeah, they must be real hard to get. I've just been picking them up by hand. So this is uh, a desensitization process to the vacuum for CJ. So the next step would be then to put him in a down and continue to vacuum. So there he got up and thought about it. I made the mistake of getting too close with the vacuum. So I'm simply going to put him back down. But again, this is showing the dog that, you know, even if I'm vacuuming close to you, you know, there's no really ne real need to get up because we are not going to allow uh, anything to happen to him. So you should stay in the down. You notice I'm going to start with the, the vacuum off towards him, and then when I decide to turn it on, I'm going to go away from him uh, so that uh, it can help his uh, thinking process, just kind of giving him a little space and then bringing it in closer. But as I'm doing this, I'm checking on him regularly just to see how he is, and I'm reinforcing down, so I'm saying down or stay, whichever you prefer. But just reinforcing that helps CJ relax and kind of he remembers, okay, this is what I need to do. Instead of um, his mind building up to wanting to go after the vacuum, we kind of interrupt his thought process now and helps him uh, cope with the vacuum cleaner right next to him. So this is what you get when you advocate for your dog. It's very powerful. Thanks for watching, guys.